Welcome to the Rise Up For You podcast, where thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and executives from around the world share their practical tips, strategies, and stories to help you unleash your potential and achieve your goals. Your journey of growth to become your best starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Rise Up For You podcast. This is your host, Natalina nasser Super excited to be here with you with another amazing guest. And actually, this is a very special guest. When I first started the podcast about five, six years ago, she was, I want to say, number six or seven episodes. And when we first started the company and we had no money, and we were just started this amazing guest. Um, she served, she jumped in. She said, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm just going to add value. And she, uh, I'll never forget that. So it is my absolute pleasure to bring your guest today, Dale Smith Thomas. Dale, thank you so much for joining us. It's really an honor to have you back. Oh my gosh, it is so great to see you gorgeous. I wish I could reach through this screen and hug your neck, but hopefully we're going to see each other in a few months. And I just have to tell you, I remember that first conference. I remember the podcast. You know, we've both had a lot of things happen since that time, but I just remember how special it was. And I knew, I knew from the first minute I met you that you were destined to make a lasting difference in people's lives. And I'm just so proud of what you're doing and how you are giving back and shining such a big light in this world. So thank you for having me back. Thank you. I I really uh, appreciate you more than you know. I think especially when somebody is starting their business, just starting off, and they could feel like maybe they don't have a huge following and not a lot of accolades. You know, they really depend on amazing people like you just to give us a chance to say, yes. hey, I don't care that you only had five podcast episodes. You I'm can. Like, Come on. <laughs> so I, I am super grateful and I always have been. But before we jump in a little bit more, tell the audience about the amazing work that you are doing. You're an international keynote speaker. You know, some of you may have seen Dale on Dr. Phil. There's just, you're just doing awesome work, really empowering people. Brag a little bit about yourself and tell us what you're doing. Well, as you know, and I want your audience to know, this is not just my career. I consider this my calling to reach out there and make a difference in people's lives. Yes, I travel around the world. Um, I have a book, my latest book is called Good Morning Gorgeous and it's about building your gorgeous energy from the inside out. And I'm sure we'll talk about this and how 2020 kind of changed things yeah. for me. I was about to have the biggest year of my career. I didn't choose speaking, speaking chose me. And I've continued to step into this space and give back all around the world. And we were about to have the biggest year of my life. And that was to reach more people. And then immediately it was gone. And so I was 60 years old and I was just thinking, do I have it in me to start over again at 60? But what I realized that COVID might take a career for a minute, but it can't take a calling. And so I decided to rise up as you teach everyone to do and say, I'm not done yet. And now I'm back on the road, traveling all over the United States. And as of five weeks ago tomorrow, I'm a new grandmother. Oh I'm my new gosh, congratulations. Nick Thomas has a little boy named Grayson and he is precious and I couldn't be happier. That's amazing. And how, how old is, is, you said four weeks? Yes, four weeks old. He is four weeks old and he is precious. And That's he lives amazing. right here in town. So I get to go over and grab him and be with him. And so the next adventure. So I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. That's fantastic. I just became a first time auntie also eight weeks ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know exactly what I'm feeling. Yeah. Just a bundle of joy. So that, that's awesome. You, you know, you said something that I want to touch upon that has really been something that has resonated with me, I would say the last year, especially since building the business is energy. You mentioned yes. about Morning Gorgeous and your book, which all of you, please check it out, about energy and, and showing up. And uh, this is, I don't want to say it's a pet peeve, but it's definitely, you know, every time I walk into a space or a networking event or anything, I just want to take all these people and be like, energy, energy matters, yes. you know? Yes. So I- 
I feel that there's a lot of people that don't realize how powerful their presence is. Yes. Right. It's not malicious. They just don't realize that their energy and their space and what they bring into a room, it matters and it's impactful and it can influence. Can you talk to us a little bit about this? I see this sure. more and more when I speak, when I, when I go into organizations, even when I go to a networking event, people just don't realize that their energy can either really take away or add. It's one or the other. It's never in between. Right. And I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it right there when you said they don't realize it because the point of power is always in the present moment, but how many people are in the present moment? And I teach on this when I'm out on the road, think about it. So many people are, you know, they're so far back here in the past thinking about what somebody said to them or traffic was awful and they bring in all of that past forward or they're so far ahead wondering what are people going to think about me that they're never in that moment. And I believe in order to have that energy and bring the energy to the moment, you've got to be in the moment right now. It's like I tell people out on the road and out in my speaking engagements, think about trying to drive your car only looking in the rear view mirror. Yeah. What would happen? You would crash your car. And the same thing happens, I think, with our lives when we're just constantly looking back. So I'm going to challenge people right now. Be in the moment like you and I right now. We both have things going on, but we're right here with each other and we can feel the energy, even though we're on screens right now. And so I tell people, you've got to step into that moment. Motion creates emotion. You may not, quote, feel like it, but when you start to tell yourself, I'm energized, you know, one of the postcards that I'm going to offer to your audience, I teach that. We're not nervous. We're energized. And we just continue to say that when we've gotten into this space where we're just kind of checked out. And then we've got to check back in and choose energy because I don't get up like this. I choose to be like this, right? I choose to be like this. Even when I'm tired, even if my feet are hurting from those shoes I love, I still choose to bring that energy. Absolutely. That I love the wording on I choose the energy. Choose it. I choose it because... I'm an introvert personally. <laughs> You're funny like me. You're an extroverted introvert. I, and you know, you know, we we both need that quiet space. 100%. And there are times I go into a space, I'm like, okay, I gotta push myself because I sometimes my natural tendency, believe it or not, is to pull back. Yes. But we have to step in instead of pull back. So yes, exactly. right. it's it's the choosing, like the amount of times you walk into a room, but you it, there's a consciousness of recognizing that I'm going to choose to show up a certain way because I know right. either way I'm going to make an impact. So which way do I want to go? Right. Do, I, do I want to take away or do I want to add? Um, I, li- I love that language, choose. I think a lot of times people can uh, kind of default to that. Well, I'm an introvert, so this is how I am, opposed to understanding that they have the power and the choice to show up differently. Well, I say it's you choose the weather you bring to the room. Are you 80 degrees and sunny? Are you cloudy with a chance of rain? Are you a full-blown hurricane? And you know what? I I challenge all of you right now. You think about it. When you walk in a room, you can feel somebody if they're a full-blown hurricane or a tornado, and you go, nope, not doing that. And so choose to bring the weather. That's a simple way. Are you going to be 80 degrees and sunny today? If you're not, well, guess what? You chose it. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit. I can hear some of, you know, listeners saying, well, how do I do that? Let's say I'm driving to an event and someone cuts me off and now they put me in a bad mood. You know, what are some things or some practices? I know you talk a lot about, you know, morning routines as well that can set us up to just be more present, more conscious, and be in a state where we can shift our energy, where we can shift the way that we show up in the moment. Well, I know that you believe, like I do, that nobody can make you feel anything. You know, it doesn't matter who cuts you off in traffic. They didn't, they didn't make you feel that. You chose that. And yeah. you know what? I tell my audiences all the time, and they go to work, and you're ticked off and you bring that negative energy and you don't even know their name. So you've allowed someone whose name you do not even know to affect the rest of your day. I believe that the formula for success is circumstances plus choices equals results. 
So if you want to change the result, change where you have your power. You can't control that that person cut you off in traffic, but you can control how you react to it. That choice is up to you. And you just say, right now in this moment, I am choosing to let this go and lean and move forward. That is your choice. Take responsibility for it. Yeah, I love the ownership component. Yes. It's the yes. ownership, right? And I've been teaching my son that since he was little. And I didn't know this. I was negative growing up. I was. I did not believe any of this. I did not practice any of this until I was in my 20s. I started reading the books, listening to the cassette tapes. That dates it. Cassette tapes and all the things. So my, <laughs> yeah, the eight tracks, cassette tapes. And so even now people are like, what's a CD? It's, it's, they're like, what's a CD? But when my son was little, anytime he would get in trouble, I would say, I am so sorry you chose time out. I chose the park, but you chose time out. And he would say, I didn't choose time out. I'm like, yes, you did. Because when you chose that action, you chose that result. Yeah. Because I wanted him to understand from a young age that I wasn't doing anything to him. He was making choices when I gave him choices. Nick, if you choose this, then you're going to go to timeout or yeah. you're going to not play with your toy or whatever. So we have to step back now and take 100% responsibility for the energy, the attitude, and the words that we use every single day. And I think the words you're saying to yourself about yourself, about your situation, also feed that energy cycle. And you get to choose which cycle you feed. 100% because, you know, even your own energy, like you said, your languaging, your thoughts can impact yourself, right? Your energy can come right back at you, right? And it impacts yes. how you show up and what you do. You're, you've always been a very loving, positive person. I remember when we spoke almost five and a half years ago on the first podcast, I remember saying to you, you're my soul sister. I'm like, yes. you're my soul sister. <laughs> Our souls recognize each other. Yes, but I, I really want you to share with the audience, how did you become this way. I know it's a choice, but what are the things that you consciously say that you do that just keep you in this? Because you're a human being, you have feelings, right? But yes. they keep you in this state of gratitude or love and kindness. What are some things you do for yourself? Well, and I'm going to back up a little bit. The thing that changed it for me, because I was negative, I was the one without the energy. I was the one that was too shy Grew up very, very poor in a little town in North Mississippi. And so I had all of that negativity. So maybe you're seeing us and thinking maybe we've always been that way. That's not true. Number one, I had a mentor in my life that I was watching chase a dream. Even though I didn't believe it was possible for me yet, I was learning from her and watching her chase a dream. So if you are a dream chaser, just know that you're also a teacher to those that are watching you. Yeah. Secondly, I changed my input to change my output. And that took a minute because I'd had all these years of negativity that I had to change what I was feeding my mind and my soul. I started reading the books. I'm here in my office and there are books everywhere. I read The Magic of Thinking Big. That book is so old, but it's one of the best books I've ever read. I read the stuff by Norman Vincent Peale. And now today, that is still my practice, but I journal every day. I meditate every day and I make sure that I surround myself when I'm having a down day. And I have those too. There are days that, you know, this is not, as Jim Rohn says, a class that you graduate from. This yeah. is a class we continue to go to. And just uh, last Friday night, I was about to do a speaking engagement and I started hearing these little nagging voices. But I called someone who is a believer in my life, believer in my mission that had a conversation with me and reminded me. And we all need those believing mirrors in our life. So I read, I surround myself with people that lift me higher. I journal and I meditate and pray. And I work on myself every single day. That's the key right there is working on yourself every day. You know, people think it just comes. No. And, no. But, and I, my, my wish for the whole world is that, Every person does that. They say, yes. I matter and I'm important enough where I'm going to work on myself every day in a human way, 
Not right. I'm going to get another PhD, not I'm going to go get yeah. a certificate technically, but that time that I invest in getting certifications and degrees, I'm going to spend maybe 10% of that time just becoming more confident, taking right. care of yourself, uh, showing gratitude and, and gratefulness. And so thank you for sharing that because you're and right. I, I did that during COVID and because I wasn't traveling and I was off the road and we didn't know when it was coming back. I also lost my father. I lost my business in, uh, let's see, May, April, May of 2020. Lost my father in in, um, in May of 2020. Lost my father-in-law in June of 2020. My son got married in the middle of a pandemic in 2020. I was ready to say, Jumanji, get me out of this game. Um, and so, but what I didn't do was give up my daily practices. I doubled down on the things that have always kept me strong for the last 40 years. I've doubled down on them during the most difficult times. Could I have slept in because I wasn't traveling or I had really not that much to do? Of course, but I still got up every day between five and 5.30 and I have that hour of power and usually longer of the journaling and listening to my soul and asking myself the tough questions and then listening and receiving the answers. But we don't quiet our minds enough many times because there's so much noise to receive. And I know you believe like I do that we have to feed our soul if we are going to live our greatest purpose and bless others and put it out there and turn on more light in this world. We have to feed our souls in order to feed others. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry for your loss. I can Thank imagine you. and understand how difficult it can be. And I also honor you for still showing up. And you. because you know that your purpose is, is so much more. Absolutely. For that. Dale, I would love to jump into the power section of the interview. And yes. Ask, ask you a couple rapid questions. Oh, I love it. Go. So the first question is, um, you know, if today were your last day on earth, what would be one final message? We like to call it your golden nugget that you would tell people. Feed your soul, which will help will feed others, which will help feed our world. Yeah. And we're very, very big here at Rise Up For You on values. We really think that values are the foundation of understanding where you're going, who you yeah. are, what you want. What's one value for you that's an absolute non-negotiable? Wow. Absolute non-negotiable. I think... For me, the absolute non-negotiable for me, my personal value is my faith and that which ties into my purpose, which ties into everything else. Yeah. And I will always speak about that, that purpose and that faith. So that is non-negotiable for me. I love that. I have one more question for you, but before I ask, tell us a little bit about how we can find you, how we can connect with you. Dale is an amazing keynote speaker. I know I've seen her in action. You have your book on Amazon, I'm sure. Tell us a little bit yes. more about where we can connect. Well, Dale Smith Thomas, you can find me on all the social media platforms. Uh, I mentioned the words a minute ago to go from nervous to energized and those things. I have that in a digital form or a copy. And so if anybody wants to reach out um, to me on any of those platforms, um, my website is Dale Smith Thomas. Instagram is Dale Smith Thomas. TikTok is Dale Smith Thomas. LinkedIn is Dale. They're all Dale Smith Thomas. You can find me there. Fantastic. And we'll make sure that we put that in the notes. I'm proud of you for being on TikTok. I'm still trying oh, to. Oh, listen. To no. Somebody challenged me with that. I had a girl that was like 20. She's like, we need you on TikTok. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, final question for you, Dale. And I asked you this on episode six or seven when we did it. As you know, where the company rise up for you. What comes to mind for you today when you hear that phrase rise up for you? Well, because I faced such challenges back in 2020, I think it has an even bigger um, meaning to me now because I felt like my wings were clipped, which maybe you felt that way too, because we couldn't get out there personally. And I felt like the times that people needed me the most, I was the most limited. And so I will, I will, I will tell you, I was whiny for a few days. <laughs> I was, I was kind of pitiful. I was like, what is happening? 
And then I realized if, as Les Brown said, if I can look up, I can get up. And I could look up and I could still be on social media. I could still put positive messages out there. And as I look back now, if I'd had the schedule that was in place, I couldn't have been there for my dad and for my mom in those final you know, month of his life that because I chose to stay in that positive space that everything has a purpose, that I was able to rise up from what I considered a very dark time much faster because I was looking up. Yeah, absolutely. Dale, thank you so much for joining us again. We're going to need to make this a regular thing. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm super honored to have you on the show. I want to bring you back to talk about confidence because that's a, a big thing that we oh, like. Oh, girl, we have to do that. I, I know. <laughs> but it's been such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Dale. And thank you everyone for joining us again on the Rise Up For You podcast. We're bringing you episodes every single week, amazing thought leaders, entrepreneurs, executives from around the world that their mission is just to make an impact, to help you reach your potential, to help your organization reach their potential with leadership. It's all about just being your best and really elevating the human condition. So thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time. Thank you, Dale. Love you. Is that